see, this is going. Yeah, let me just make sure it's rolling here. Yeah, all right, I'm live. So, uh, awesome, I've got uh, Crypto Face here. We're gonna do a second round of our uh, Bitcoin trading on BitMEX. So I'm still kind of learning here a little bit and it's been great to kind of work with, um, with Crypto Face who's kind of been a little bit of a, uh, an expert at this. He's been uh, dealing in this, in this area for a while. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, um, so we've been talking a little bit about uh, a few different things. So talking about some indicators, the ETF uh, news that came out, the, um, uh, you know, a little bit of the, the trends that we've been seeing lately. But uh, uh, how do you want to start this off? I mean, I guess maybe we could go over some, some of my, like I haven't, I haven't uh, done a whole lot here since our last stream. So um, uh, when you first are coming in to BitMEX, kind of what are, what are some of the first things that you're looking at? Normally, I mean it's a time like after a dump, right? And so, um, or just any time where there's like a solid top, and I'm, I'm looking for tops and I'm looking for bottoms, right? And I draw my ley lines, I draw lines, right? Mm -hmm. um, I look for a couple patterns, you know, I just look at everything, you know. Um, but there is certainly a good what I believe, like, I've, I've come up with a good little starter kit, um, and it works, and it consists of the hype industry candles, the Bollinger Bands on the three-minute and the five-minute, drawing lines, um, and, and triangles. I mean, you look for the, the triangles, and when it's coming to the end of the triangle, you know, it's, if you come to the end of the trend, it's either going to break up or break down. It's a little more risky. Um, well, I look for, look for a couple things, I guess. I'm looking for not to gamble, mm -hmm. you know. Well, see, I'm looking at this as breaking below uh, the Bollinger Band. So I'm looking at this as a good good opportunity to buy or to go long. Um, uh, at least that's how I'm interpreting the charts here. The volumes are kind of low. But what are your thoughts? Well, I tell you, like, because the hike in the sheet really helps, right? You see there's, like, a nice arm of red, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. So, just looking at before, it kind of looks like there's going to be an arm of green. So, it could be a potential. So, let me, like, where would you think you would enter into the long and where do you think you would exit? Uh, well, maybe enter right here at six, uh, 63.75. Exit maybe sixty four twenty five, okay. or maybe that's a little bit too much. Um, well, that's certainly a possibility. You want to, let's draw some lines, dude. All right. So, um, one thing about the Bollinger Bands too, right, is it kind of shows you like how volatile and wide it could be. So, yeah, click on above the fifty four. Maybe stretch, maybe just stretch your chart to like stretch it up a little bit more. Just click on like the right number or something. Yeah. Okay. I would much rather um, if we started this back when we were at the top of that Bollinger Bank, that would have been excellent. That that's a perfect, perfect sell point. So like I'm super I've been running all my trades on the short side. So I'll be honest, I really haven't been long much at all. Um, I think you were saying last time there was more incentive to short as well, at least in BitMEX. Yeah, with the fees um, and just like the overall market. Like if out of every 10 
people that get liquidated, I would say probably eight out of ten are get are liquidated in longs. And it's just much more comfortable to be in short than hoping for a long. Uh, much more comfortable. And like you know, anyone that's new, like everyone starts with long, but we can, you know, look, like look at the bottom. See, like it's forming some support. So look, it's turning green. Go to ahead, go to the three minute. Click on the three minute. We're on the five. This could be a good long entry. Right. Forming a nice little bottom here, yeah. Right, and then, like, I'm imagining that top of that bowl of your band in blue. Like, if you just draw like an imaginary line kind of down, and maybe that's probably where you do like maybe you sell. Like, draw like extend that blue thick line. I will use like a paintbrush. That's kind of what I was talking about. But you can you can do the lines too. Thicken those lines too. Click next to. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, you'll change it to... I'll change the color. Change it for light blue or something. That's what I do. It's like a brand new color for it. So that's cool too. Um, all right. Now, let's go ahead and enter a long here. Um, we could wait maybe for one more to see, but I think it'll be all right. So, let's see, let's see, what's the bottom of that? Is it 381? Uh, boy, I gotta zoom this in a little bit. Yeah, there you have it. Okay. Yeah, 6380. Okay. So, um, yeah, it's looking kind of bullish, isn't it? So I would want to maybe enter and be safe, like, in the middle between this big green and the very top. Just be careful. Or just put it in 60. Go ahead and put it in. 63.88 or 63.85, whatever you want to do. Let's do 63.80 and um, – and All set up. I look looking good. Yeah. Um, go ahead and put the buy in. Yep. Okay. Uh. Yeah. Well, the Bollinger Bands have kind of updated because what we were looking at before, you see all this, this space here, you know, I guess that's, uh, okay. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know. I mean, at this point it's, it's looking like it, it may, may trend down. Maybe, maybe that'll help fill, fill the order if that. You want to go three minute then, or just okay? Yeah. Okay. So uh, I guess I guess that was what I was uh, seeing here. So like the uh, the Bollinger Band is updating based on the like the uh, on the one and three minute charts. It's like as different here. At least that's what yeah, I'm saying. Changes. Yeah. That's why I say with the Bollinger Bands, just stick with the three minute and. Mm. Sounds good. I got to get some more sources that uh, I'm not getting copyright strikes. I try to get like some instrumentals and stuff, but um, sometimes they still they still hit uh, with the the copyrights. Yeah, I 
I've, uh, you know, I, there's a link on YouTube somewhere where you can get to, like, music. That's yeah. Ordained. And, like, my war drum music is ordained. Um, but a lot of music, like, even if you just play it on, like, with a DVD player or something, it'll, it'll pick up, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so, a lot of people ask me, like, okay, if you sell at the tops of Bollinger Bands, do you buy, like, what do you use to long on? Um... A lot of people have gotten a lot of trouble in the past for longing off like the bottom of Bollinger Bands and like Fox and Tomato. But like this candle's turning green, you know? And so if there's like one more green five minute candle, I'd say we just enter in at whatever like the market's yeah. at. Um, yeah. Do you want to zoom out to the 15 minute? It's uh, kind of Looking better. <laughs> um, and then maybe scroll the wheel a little bit, you know, scroll the wheel to the point. This is a terrible looking chart. Let's get rid of the Bollinger band. You want to get rid of the Bollinger band right now? Uh, oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I got it. Yeah. All right. Oh shit, that's not what I want to do. I amended this. Um, yeah. I just like for one one second, like I amended this order. Like I just moved the. Uh, I guess you can't see in my mouse, but I moved the this green box down, and right. and uh, so that. What did that do? Because it's. I guess it's. So you're in active order, so you moved it down to sixty-three. Like twenty-three. It's it's showing sixty three twenty. So even though it says sixty three, it's not going to. Yeah. So you move it to whatever's on the chart, whatever the chart says. So go ahead and click the X button. Or yeah, click the X button. That's what's important. Okay. Okay. So go back to the three minute, and I'm gonna send you a picture here so you can kind of make your chart look like this. All right. Got it. So I don't. Uh, I don't think my audience is able to see this. I have to switch it over. I'm not sure how to do that in uh, in OBS, but. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm even checking my my stream here. Let me. See. Uh, yeah, because the way the OBS is working, it's basically pulling up uh, just just the uh, just Google. So, What do you mean the other way? Like so, um, like squeeze it in together from top to bottom instead of stretching it out. Uh, like the first way you're doing it, keep going. Uh, the other way. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're trying to do is draw lines at the bottom. So I want you to see the bottom of like the left. Okay. The okay, I got you. Let me. Um, I'm still uh, new to playing around with it. Okay, there we go. Right there is perfect. Okay. 
So I've got a thick line. So like basically starting from the bottom, like so. Is that? You could do that. You could do that, and then you could also. So that's one. Shit. Another one. Uh, let's do another one here. Uh, let's say like basically about like so. Yeah, 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 yeah,
of, you know, support levels, you know, and it works. Now, as far as setting a target, right, so you've got my position fill. So. Would you, would you fill that? I'm still at 63.94. I still haven't. Uh, I got in. Well, I got in on Ethereum. Oh. Right, because I already have a Bitcoin position. So my Ethereum position is 271.55. Um, I'll just put one in. Same. 271.55. See if it fills. Oh shit, it only did one? Damn it. Uh, can I. Now, Ethereum, um, like, costs, costs more, you know what I mean? It's like a uh, contract value. Who? 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 Who just entered in? Threw some lines, looked at some Bollinger bands, hiking and sheep handles, and now we just chill. Um, you know, where, okay, so, I know what to do now, there's more lines we have to draw, let's go to Bitcoin, okay, and look at the top, bro, look where we can draw a line, yeah, still, okay, but, no, that's not what I wanted, try right, right clicking, Man, we're coming to you know uh, a potential breakout here. Start going back even further, like on the very first dump. Maybe even like flatten this out right yeah. there. Yeah. Your OCD, uh -oh. you know? <laughs> yeah. All right. Check it out. So, okay. So, dude, six, we're, we're coming to the end of the triangle. So, the trades are riskier, you know? Um, so, preferably, like if this was any other type of, you know, if you're able to draw a triangle on any pattern. Just want to get in, sell at the tops, you know, and then exit the bottoms or long at the bottoms. And you can add your Bollinger bands. You want to add the Bollinger bands and see how it looks. Yeah, I still, uh, still pumping a little bit. Like, I wasn't able to get in at the 6394 position. Now we're basically almost at. But I tell you what, go ahead and change the order to 63.99, you know? Oh, let's do it here, huh? Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to get it all figured out, too. So, it's it's at 63.99 on the books. I guess that's, uh, uh, there we go, it filled. Probably not where I wanted to fill though, because I was like, you know, trying to get in at like sixty three seventy five, and maybe, you know, maybe take that up to like sixty four hundred or so. It's pretty much already there. Um, yeah, is that what you wanted to get in? Is that where we? Because mentioned getting in on it. Let's take it. Yeah, I was. Uh, it's all right because we're approaching the breakout level. Because yeah, it's it's coming down now. Coming well a little bit. Yeah. Uh, what happened here? So I don't have. Uh, been pretty good. I'm. Uh, 
Man, I'm still just trying to... I, I'm still fighting jet lag. I've been sleeping a lot. So I've been working out a lot. Then I got to cook. And that's been going awesome. I love having a cook. So I just open up my fridge and I got a fridge full of food to eat. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to eat basically clean. So basically, um, I mean, my problem is over the last year, I was just too much sugar, uh, too much eating out. Like uh, before, I'd open up my fridge and it was completely empty because I always just ate out. You know, I just go, like, if I got hungry, I just go drive somewhere and just eat something. And that was just probably not the best. Now it's like, I'm, it's better now because I can spend more time in my office. And, um, like, this is what I wanted to do. I, I didn't, you know, it's kind of a waste of time to, like, drive somewhere and, you know, get food prepared and everything. So I'm, I'm liking this setup a lot better. And basically, it's costing me, uh, like, it's, it's going to be cheap. Like, she, she wanted, I think, like, four million dong um to uh for, for the entire month which is how much is that it's like 160 bucks so 160 bucks for her to come over two to three times a week and cook for me and she was over here like five hours the other time so and that like that's good money for people in vietnam so yeah. you know like she's she's ecstatic you know <laughs> and there, there's no way like it would cost me like 160 bucks maybe for like you know a day or two in, in the states and here it's 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 gonna be good for like a month so, um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm liking, liking, uh, uh, that setup. So, um, I already got like a cleaner. Yeah. I'm just hiring people. That's why the next, next thing I want to do is maybe hire an office assistant, someone to basically kind of, um, uh, I don't know, I put them, put them in front of the computer and, and, uh, have a bunch of things, uh, ready for them. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm on Bitcoin. So yeah, I, uh, I mean, it's kind of, at least on a three minute chart, it's kind of reaching the top of the Bollinger Bands. Maybe maybe go to like five minutes, see what we got. Okay. Yeah. Are you? Talking about, um, oh, uh, like, okay. Like, like so? Okay. That was like my first one. Yeah, I didn't realize you could split the trades up like that. Like if you've got a hundred, you're in a position with a hundred. All right. Yeah. 
I'm starting to get, starting to go red here. I feel like it's gonna dump a little bit. Yeah, in fact, you know, it, it could certainly fail, bro, and fall down. So um, it could certainly not make it. We're kind of trying to see. But I mean, I could I could still have that one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Patience, man. The patience is yeah. tough, too. You know? How, how are you, um, uh, sometimes the best of what? Oh, gotcha. Um, I was going to ask about, like, the, the, like, how, when you're looking at, like, the volume of trading, because basically, like, you can see, like, this huge dump. That was around that ETF news that came out, so that's kind of expected. Um, I'm not sure what the second one is, but that was kind of, like, uh, it basically it dumped real hard, but came shot all the way back, but there was a ton of volume there. Uh, now it's like, it's pretty flat. Like you can see, like the volume is really kind of diminishing. Like when you, how, how are you interpreting, um, positions and everything with, with volume? Cause it's really thinning out is, is the way I'm seeing it. Yeah, it's 11 here, 11 a.m. So, yeah, 11 a.m. on a Thursday, because I'm a day ahead. You know, I would say besides the weekends, like, even then, like, weekends are, is where, as long as it's in a weekday, there's, I don't know, like, the weekends is where, like, the volume is, like, where Bitcoin's more, like, open to. Spikes and not they normally don't always happen, but I'm pretty sure like it was last weekend we had like a five hundred dollar spike on like Saturday or Sunday, you know. Um, but I wouldn't say there's really much of a correlation. Of, I'm not looking at volume really um, much with the starter today. I'm just checking in with the chat here a little bit, and they're saying they can't hear you very well. They're saying your audio is real low. Like I can hear you fine, but. Uh, Yeah, let's, I don't know. Jeez. I can turn you up here. Input volume, output volume, maybe output volume. I don't know. Let me see if that. I put the output. Input. Inputs all the way up. All right. Whatever turns green if I'm talking to see anything. Um. I don't know. Um. I hope that. I hope that helped. Maybe someone on my stream can. Uh, okay. All right. So. Know, all right. Whatever. Do you? If you just right click my. If you go into Discord. I need to get your screen. Open up Discord. I don't know if it'll show up on your screen. It's not. Yeah. Okay. And then you see my icon on the right, on the very right, like to the right of leaf call and everything. Right click it, and you, there should be a user volume. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, boom. Boom. Okay. Yeah. So can you guys hear me? Clover stream. Can you hear me better now? Yeah, it should be better. I'm like, it's actually blaring a little bit of mine. So I'm going <laughs> <laughs> to. Uh, I think it should be. I think it should be better now. So hopefully that fixes the issue. Maybe someone can let me know on the stream if that's better. Uh, I think a bunch of people just pieced out because they're like, fuck, man, we can't hear face. But, uh, should be good. Um, so look, dude, look. So now we're getting a green candle, you know. So we were flopping and groping a little bit. We got a little bit scared, you know. A lot better. They're saying a lot better. Sweet. Okay. Good. 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 So we were getting a little scared. 
We don't want to shake too soon. You're your own worst enemy. Put the trade in. We have good, we have decent indicators here, man. You know? Um, it's the first time I did a long trade in a little while, so. Yeah, we're at the bottom of the trend. Top of the trend would be like 64, so I'll probably set an exit. And we were just there. I'll put an exit at like 64.25, a little exit. 64.50, an exit. That's probably going to be like the bulk of my trade. Um, maybe a third on each and one third to hold in case of a major breakout. So are you just putting in like sell orders like when, when you do that or how, how does it? Okay. Yes. It's just, okay. Let's go ahead and do that. Put in post orders, sell orders. Yep. So like, I don't know, 64, say 30. Uh, uh, well, well, let's hover your mouse over your lines and see what they say. All right. And then kind of guess of like when it would be. So it's going to be further in the future. Right. So yeah, it looks like 6430, 6427, something. If you want to be safe, you can, you know, inch it down a little bit. So yeah, six low, yeah, 6430, 6429, perfect. And uh, I think you put 100 on there. If you wanted to split it up or if you just wanted to exit your whole position there, that's cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, right. I, I, could, yeah. I can adjust. How do I? Oh, so I go to active orders and I can adjust this yep. to 50. Sweet. Okay. 50. I'll do that. No. Oh. You can put in another sell order for maybe the line on top and... Okay. Uh, and another sell order at uh, what you're talking like, what, like 64.50? Um, so you have two. Okay, so you have one so far on the book. So, like, the second line, look where your second top line is, right? Mm -hmm. So that would be like if we break the first line, we are likely to touch that second line, right? Mm -hmm. So that's probably where you'd want to put your second trade. All right. Or your uh, second exit. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Just uh and man, wait till you see it works. You're gonna you're setting your trade right now. And then, you know, we're gonna shoot the shit for a little bit, maybe play some poker, talk to your stream, talk about whatever. Yeah, I'm gonna check in with the chat. I mean uh things don't always move fast, man, you know, like it's not always super crazy volatile. You know, so it's like patience. You put your trade in and chill. Everyone wants to know about me getting held up in the U.S. <laughs> that's, oh, that's why I'm, that's why I'm out of the country. Uh, I got, let me take this phone call real quick. I'll be right back. Is that cool? Yeah. Yeah, I'll just uh, check in here. Um, I'm going to put in, I'm going to put in some other orders. Let's see here. Go to let's try one minute. Oh man, that's not looking good. Let's do five minute again. My lines are a little bit off. Um, add us some Bollinger bands. See how it looks. Kind of right in the middle there. So perhaps this is going sideways for a little bit. But it's not going to take much on the books here to break out of this. Let's see if I can do this differently. So what I'm going to do here, move this this way. And bring this order book open a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. That's a lot better. Three minute.
I'm gonna buy it. Can you BitMEX in the US? Well, it's, um, I guess like when you're setting up your account there, they block it in the US, but you can get around it with um, uh, just a VPN. So, I mean, I'm in Vietnam, so it's a little bit different, but you know, I think this is something that is the way it's set up because you're not really using like your real name, like there's no um, KYC. I'm thinking that this is going to be one where they're, uh, you know, would want more information in the US if they're trying to regulate it. All right. I put in another order at. Uh, a buy order for 100 at 63.75, just in case this drops. 63.75. I was just kind of noticing, like some of the the these lines here, like the uh, the dotted lines, the green lines, and the and the red lines. Those are those are kind of helpful, at least kind of uh, giving you a little bit of. Can't a, see your mouse. It's like don't know which lines you're talking about. I'm talking about the uh, the. I don't. Can you see? Can you see like the dotted lines? Uh, can you see like the dotted like my uh, like my cell yes, orders? Yes, yes, okay. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about my mouse. So, but oh, okay, okay. Uh, but one of the things like getting back to like what we we're talking about on volume, uh, like if you're, I just kind of expanded my order book here. I like this a lot better because like if you can look in the total here, and you can see like like well, it's changed a lot. But this used to be like a lot more uh, support um, and it was really thin in in the sell orders all the way up to until like 6400 it's kind of uh, it's evened out a little bit so it looks like it's kind of just trending sideways at this point yeah I guess this would be where you'd want to just have a little bit of patience Here's we take a look at Ethereum. You there? Oh. Yep, I'm here. All right. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you want to go over Ethereum a little bit. Um, Cause I'll. What do I got here? I've got. Uh, so I've got. pull up Ethereum. Let me pull up your screen. Yeah, so we're just sneaking on the bottom of the trend line. Pull up your screen. All right. So what did you want to look at? Anything specifically? Um, I guess. I like that line you drew right there. The light blue. Let's see that little square. Yeah. Line. Lines are important. Like they do, especially at psychological, like psychological points do matter too like at the zeros and the 50s okay you'll see like a little pickup in the candles like you'll notice there's like a little weirdness like something that doesn't belong there mm. and then you'll look and you're like oh is that a psychological point mm. the uh so i guess i'm still a little bit hazy on so i put in an order for 100 at 21.55 um and I'm seeing like an active order here, so that order hasn't filled, right? Is that what I, is that what I'm seeing here? Correct. So active orders have not filled. Oh wait a minute. So this well, this is my Bitcoin orders, I guess. So positions are the ones that have filled. Correct. Okay, so it did fill. It's filled at uh, 
at, at 2155 and then uh, I'm going to be liquidated at 247.30 and um, I guess I'd have to figure out like unrealized P&Ls and see how those are looking so I'm like uh, about a percent down uh, on your equity right so if you're 10x so you're 10 bucks right um, so yeah we are just chilling dude letting time go by and but I, must say, I didn't put in a uh, sell order though with this so it's basically like I'm I'm in this I'm in at um, you know at uh, at at 271 but essentially it's just like I'm I'm there and so it's like I'm just gonna have that on the books until um, essentially it liquidates but like it, if it were to I mean if it were to pump to 500 or something like I'm still in on that order mm -hmm. yeah yep. so I guess what I it would probably be best to put in like a sell order at like I don't know um, Looking at these, maybe I guess uh, I don't know. Now, yeah, now Ethereum, um, you know, every dollar is a big move, you know. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah, so let's see what you were thinking. Let's see what you uh, think. Like maybe all the like I I don't know maybe twenty seven twenty two hundred seventy seven. That's maybe a little bit high. What time is that? So that would be at 6.05. What time is it? Go to the, your current candle and see what time it says. 14. So, yeah. So we are speculating that, yeah, in like an hour and a half, two hours, if the trend continues, that we'd hit 277. Hmm. Good expectation, good expectation. You know, I'm like, you look at like the top, you know, you're, you're, you're in the trend, you know, maybe draw a line. So we're missing our top, excuse me, we're listen, missing maybe like a top line. You want to draw maybe a line on the top, maybe zoom out, let's zoom out, All right, let's zoom out. Not right now, no, much better picture. Maybe... Well, let's try like. How's that look? Getting fancy. We're getting fancy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can keep that up there. I mean, maybe I can bring it down a little bit. Maybe like so. I think right where that Bollinger Band strand ends on the top is would, would probably be like a good sell point. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, so maybe, I don't know. I guess I'm just going to play, let's do. You can play, listen, man, you can set lines on the tops of Bollinger Bands. You can set lines all over the place, and it's a, you know, it's a more likely place where it could be. So, um, I feel like with this Ethereum, like, the top is that, pull up my chart. Like I'm on 274. You know, 274 is probably where we see some um, resistance. In fact, if you look at timestamp 1151 or 1148, there's a little hitch right there, right? So, like a trailer, we can put a we can hitch a line on that. Um, see what I mean? 1151. So it's actually kind of right where it shows like your sell order. That square box. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know what? Your are your time thing is different than mine. <laughs> Let's see. Well, I'm on five minute. What are you on three? Oh, uh, yeah. I'm on three minute. I was talking about your actual, the actual like time on the bottom of your chart. It's different than mine. It's... Wonder if that has something to do with where I'm at. It's it's on UTC though, right? Is that? Okay, so you see where it says U.S. dollar perpetual, the dollar? If you line up the D in dollar and go straight up, that's kind of where I'm talking, where you start right. the H. Yep. Uh, yep. Right with the H? Like right there. Uh, at, the ver at the corner of the H. The, 
left top corner. Yeah. Down to the right. On so, the inside of the H. Like, boom, right there. You can hitch. Yeah, that'll work too. That'll work too. Yep. Right, and then you could hitch on the on right below that too. So there's a little flat line. So you can hitch a line right there. What do you mean by hitch? What do you mean by hitch? Just start the line right there. Uh, since, uh, since it's kind of like a not a major oops, shit. level, there's still a shift. Right. So you can just start the line right there. This music I have is terrible. I can't it's even terrible. hear your music. I was gonna maybe put some music, on <laughs> put some music yeah, on mine. Put some music on yours, bro. It helps. Uh, I guess uh, I don't know. I don't know if I really got much here. I was like, what I used to do is I would just put an instrumental on repeat. Let me see what I got on my. I use YouTube, bro. Yeah. What do you uh? What do you do for music? Like when you go to YouTube, let's do YouTube. So you said you had something. Want to maybe walk me through uh, where you're going for music? Oh boy, those are some deep secrets, man. I All right. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought you were just going to show me something simple. Um, no, there's a link somewhere, dude, in the Creator Studio or some shit that YouTube sometimes will flash. And it's like YouTube allowed music for free. Like that's monetizable or whatever. Uh, okay. Um, uh, yeah, I can't give away like my two biggest tracks. No, no, no. Yeah, that's fine. Um, like I've got. Uh, what kind of music do you listen to, man? Lately, I've been uh, listening to a lot of Little Peep. Um, I didn't, I didn't know much about Little Peep, uh, and then uh, I like like the instrumentals. Like, uh, oh man, his new stuff was terrible, bro. His like, yeah, was good. That was good. <laughs> like, you know, that was that's like his famous. I mean, but oh man, I saw one of his concerts, bro. It was up like lately. Like, he was so bad. Bro. So he like, was just zan the fuck out, like yeah. Oh, yeah, he's the thing about like a lot of like rappers and stuff. Um, like I really like the beats, and it's really hard for me to relate to the lyrics sometimes. But the beats is really where it's at. And you know where I really started getting that from was uh, Dr. Dre because like I loved a lot of like the the music that he was producing for other artists, but I kind of liked it without the lyrics. And so that's when I really started getting in, into instrumentals and. Uh, uh, especially back in my football days, there was a lot of guys that liked to freestyle to that. Like I can't really freestyle or nothing, but uh, but like when I had that stuff on, if you know a lot of my friends or something be coming in, they just they just start freestyling like crazy. It's, it was fun to watch. So I got it. I got in uh, instrumentals like pretty big back in college and and even when I was in the pros for a little bit. So um, that's I don't know. Like I like instrumentals because like I you know I can put it on repeat and not. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily get old, especially if it's like background music. But um, yeah, you've had some good instrumentals on your old streams. Now that I remember, bro, you've had a couple little like you'd have little instrumental beats and stuff going on. There was one. Um, forgive me for how it's gonna sound, but it was like. Doo, 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 doo. I don't know. You have to pull up. You'll have to pull it up. <laughs> <laughs> I just I remember that song, dude. Yeah. I remember it. Yeah, I'm gonna put this on super low, so you probably can't hear what's going on. But this is Lil Peep, Bright Side. I like this instrumental. Shout out, Lil Peep. Yeah. Lil Peep. <laughs> but like, yeah, he's got some he's got some lyrics and stuff on his songs that I just like I can't really relate to, and it's just kind of it sounds kind of corny sometimes. But I mean, fuck, dude, the dude was like 18, 19 years old, you know. So, like, his beats and a lot of stuff that was being produced for him was being produced at a much higher level. Like, you know, it was, uh, uh, you know, by these, you know, record companies or whatnot. So, um, you know, it's, that's, that's, I think, the stuff that, uh, that I really like and I enjoy. Like, I, I, I can listen to, like, some, some good instrumentals. Uh, let's see what else. Put some trap instrumentals. Uh but yeah, I don't think you can hear it on my end. But we'll see how that turns out on this on the stream. Because um, they make bro music can make such a it can also ruin a video. There's people that have music that ruin. Sure. Their, it's like 
yeah. too loud, and I've done it before. I used to like turn my music up loud on purpose. I used to have hard style shit. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna have to bring it back, like on the weekend, whenever, like Friday or Saturday. That's when I will do videos with like some hard hitting house, like. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's when I had the most fun, bro. I love just going ham on my YouTube videos. Yeah. Yeah, I would try to keep it low, and I can always bump it up, I guess, when I look look after the stream. So it sounds good in my ear right now, so I hope that's good for my stream. Uh, just a little background instrumental, like, that's, yeah. All right, so let's get back to kind of where I'm at. So I've got a, uh, got a sell on Ethereum at 275. Um, it's currently at 270. Bitcoin, what's Bitcoin at? Uh, they're really both just going sideways. So what? when when the market's pretty much going sideways, not a whole lot of volume, I mean, I guess that's maybe where you're just kind of setting setting orders and just kind of you know, playing poker or uh, maybe... You, the weed, yeah. No, yeah. No, I'm just <laughs> um, yeah, you set your marks, bro. Like, that's, like, there's this girl in my Discord. Shout out to Vicky. And, you know, last night... We put out the signal like, yo, we're short in 6,700. You can set, like, we're prepared to short uh, all the way up. This, this girl put in cells at 68, 69, 71, 72. And that one second, all those orders got bought up were hers. And she just whacked the hell out of today, man. She just, so you just set your orders, dude. Like, when there's, you know, when there's action in, in a window, you can get in. And like you don't, I, I don't know. Most of your trades, you want to set your enters and your sells. Almost like all of them. Yeah. Unless there, unless there's like a pump and there's action and you have to be attentive. You should always, and and you'll be right, dude. I'm telling you, you're gonna be like, damn, is it really like this easy? I draw some lines and look at the Bollinger Band and the candles. Like, you're you're skipping so much BS, dude. Like. The starter pack is real, man. Yeah. I, I think that one of the, like, I was going to do today's video on basically kind of more of like an overview of like a portfolio because right now I'm pretty heavy in Ethereum, but it's all based on um, uh, a lot of these projects that I've been getting into. And what I wanted to do was basically kind of set up a trading, um, uh, like a, a trading setup where, you know, I'm going through like BitMEX, setting up some of my orders, um, you know, maybe, you know, um, looking at some different things, maybe setting up some different orders with uh, some of the other projects that I'm in. Because, I mean, in a lot of ways, you could potentially do this with, uh, you know, like, say like something like Proof of Week Hands, like you're in Proof of Week Hands, I'm not in right now, but say you're in it, like, I think it's at like, you know, 45, 4,700, say it pumps to like, you know, 50, 60,000 or something, and maybe that's a maybe that's a good time to get out. Even you know you've got the ten percent in, ten percent out, so you got to deal with that. But in some of those projects, it might be worthwhile to uh, to look at something like that. I guess it's kind of more of like a that's that's probably not the best example because that's you know because you have like the uh, the big fees getting in and out. Um, that's not going to be something to really uh, trade on. But I wanted to do a little bit more of uh, this type of uh, trading with. Um, even something like arbitragen or uh, a few of the other uh, project tokens or coins that I'm in. Um, and that's kind of like the, the trading setup that I've got here uh, with these computers. I mean, I'm, uh, I've got one. I got this guy. Uh, I'm going to set up another one. And uh, I think I'm going to, uh, uh, that's where I'm going to look at maybe getting somebody to come in and help. Like, I, uh, I think I have a little bit more of a, like a trust level with um, <laughs> Asian, like, well, you, but like, I guess Asians in general, like, uh, like for instance, even like this, you know, this woman <laughs> I got coming over. Else, you know, Asians are, are, have received the most, although I tell you what, Asians are starting to get um, denied at like Western schools in America and stuff. But um, yeah, everyone trusts. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I since since being over here in Asia, I didn't really fully understand some of the distrust with Indians until you're over here, and uh, like that's that's been something that I've I've come across is that like a lot of people when you're when I when I've been traveling around here at least in my experiences has been like you know 
you, you can't trust Indians. It's just they, they, have a, they have a different way of kind of doing things. But uh, like, um, like some of the, the different cultures here, like I would say probably some of the people that are the most trustworthy would be the Japanese, uh, you know, because of just their, their culture. Um, you know, they, uh, I've heard stories of like, you know, people buying stuff and then leaving and forgetting their change. And people are like running after them with their money to like yeah. track them down. That, that type of thing. Vietnamese are a little bit more, um, I don't know. That's the number one Asian country I want to go to, man, Japan. Yeah. About it. Tokyo, so Tokyo for sure. Did you get your earnings from our debt? Um, so, like, I'm not an A-bot. Are you talking about, like, uh, I mean, I get a little bit from, um, uh, from um, you know, people I've got signed up underneath me. Uh, but uh, I was just wondering. I thought it was. I thought it was like different now. So like every twenty four hour period, like whenever you went in, is when that twenty four cycle, twenty four hour cycle is going to begin. It's not at a like four a.m. UTC like it was before. Oh, really? You didn't know that? They changed that. No, when did that? Yeah, they that they changed that a long time ago. Um, so now uh, instead of like the four a.m. UTC, uh, which would have been a right about now, yeah, because it was like eleven o'clock here. Three minutes. Go, what the heck? And this is, I thought this is always when my stuff comes in. You know, yeah. I, open up, like, Where is it? I think th they changed that. Cause there was like, you could, you could tell like the trading activity, like around that time period was a little bit different. Like you had a, um, you kind of have, I don't know. It was like, it was kind of like a ramp up, you know, right towards the, the 4am UTC. And then there was like a sell off when people would get, um, you know, get their earnings or whatnot. So, uh, and it was kind of like a, like a heartbeat or something like every day. It was as you started to see um, uh, a little bit of activity, and so now it's a little bit more dispersed because basically it's you know whenever you went in, it's then it's a twenty four hour cycle. An important part, um, sort of actually in Bitcoin and Ethereum right now, right? Like trend line on the bottom. Let's zoom break in. Break it doesn't mean we're going to dump, you know, but uh, we are a little sideways, you know. We're a little sideways. Zoom out here to Bitcoin and see, and you know. Yep. When you're at the end of a triangle, it's risk. It's the riskiest part of the trade. You know what I mean? It could break down right now. Eat. It could just dump right now, or it could pump. That's like the part we're in. Yeah. The volumes are so low, though. As that at least that's yeah. that's like um, could, uh, do nothing. You know, but all it takes is volumes low, so it's that much more vulnerable. Yeah. There's this. It comes out of nowhere. You know. Looking at the order book. There's though, a huge there's... order at 63.87 on the uh, sell side. You know, well now, oh, now it just got eaten up. It's interesting to see like all of this activity because, like, you know, this was an exchange that was really kind of off my radar for uh, a while, and part of it was just because, like, you know, I was really when I was kind of looking at things, it was just I was just looking at Coin Market Cap, and it's not recognizing along with some of the other exchanges. Um, for whatever reason, uh, and so like when you're looking at like the trading volume on the different exchanges, you know, typically it's been what is it? It's been uh, Binance and Hyobi, and uh, there's been the two that have been kind of trending towards the top. I haven't taken a look at it in a while. I guess there. Are, let's let me run through that a little bit. So it's like, right, so check this out. Go ahead. Um, okay. So let's go to so we those orders of one million, two million. We wanted to see if they're being yanked, like the carpet pulled, or if they're actually getting eaten into. And that's how you, like, and, and you want to analyze whether they're pushing it up or pushing it down when when the, when, the, when it thins out. Um, it looks like it just got eaten up. But, oh, man, that's crazy. It went from, like, 100,000 all the way up to almost 800,000. Yeah, it's, it's, so, click on customize or do you have your recent trade yeah no we exit click on customize at the top right please okay why, why is it it's not dropping down for me why is it oh okay yep there we go and click recent trades okay, uh, boom. and you can move that over to the left if you'd like yeah. um, so when there's 
whether it's bot action or spoofies or a group that's playing the numbers, putting up two mil, three mil, eight mil, one mil, and playing around. I look at the recent trades to see if those are actually getting bought into or if they're just pulling it off the exchange and trying to play like mind games, right? Whether they're trying to push it up or down, right? And so like, you'll see the recent trades, like look, there's ones for a dollar, dollar thirty, like hmm. small. So they're, they're really not eating in. Oh, now there's some bigger ones, boom, right? And just, you just keep an eye on these things and like familiarize yourself with them. Okay. You know? Maybe that'd be good to... Know. Setup. How how are you liking my setup here? Like I I kind of like the having the, like that. Wow, it's a great setup. Yeah. Jeez. Is that the same as yours? No. No. But, um, <laughs> Maybe it's good for me really right like now. It. Yeah. Um. Uh, let, me, let me let me do that to my setup. I was like, can I get can I get any more space here to work with? I don't know if I can. I guess yeah, I the. Really like it. The place order. Um, the place order is pretty much static, I guess. Uh, uh, let me check in here. Unfortunately, I've had really bad experiences with North Indians from India. That was the area I was looking to go to, man. Like that's, in my in my opinion, that's where the best developers in the world are. You know. Um, Think the best developers are Indian, not Russian or Chinese. Indian, Indian, and kind of North Indian too, like Pakistan too. Like I mean, two of the platforms, two of the platforms um, that I've that I've been associated with, like mo the majority of their developers are in Lahore, Pakistan, and so like that's why I was looking to possibly go out there and and just like you know, I mean, it's a, a you know. Uh, not probably the greatest area to travel to, but you know, maybe just going around there and seeing like, you know, just, just, just engulfing myself in the culture a little bit, understanding a little bit more and just maybe trying to find like, you know, a few of the more reputable like tech companies, you know, cause I'm not going to get that really searched on. It's it. I can't get that searching on the internet, you know, Some guy off the street, you know, you never know that boy, that internet is cluttered. I bet over there with all types of BS. Jeez. So, I mean, I'm, I'm interested in, in kind of, you know, maybe going out there and just like, you know, finding some developers and just having them build some stuff for me. And they're going to do it on the cheap, like much, much, uh, you know, much, much more affordable than I you know, could do in the U.S. Like it becomes prohibitively expensive to hire, you know, a guy that's, you know, earning six figures in the U.S., you know, uh, working for Microsoft or Amazon, at least from Seattle where I'm from. Um, you know, they, they're, they're going to want a lot of money to... To work with them but you know you work with these guys in pakistan or india they're going to work for much much less and potentially do you know as good uh, of a job or you could even have even more of them so instead of ha hiring maybe one or two badass developers in the u.s you know you could hire a team of like you know almost a dozen you know in, in india or uh pakistan and they're all going to be able to work together and so that's that's uh kind of maybe a long-term thing i'm looking at like you know maybe doing that um uh you know, setting up some networks here. Like, I have a few networks here in Vietnam. I just, you know, and they've been pretty good. Uh, it's, I don't know. I just, I just, um, being from Seattle, like, you see so many, like, Seattle right now has this huge influx of Indians coming into the area, and all of them are getting hired by Amazon, Microsoft, all these tech companies. Um, they're to, it's to the point where... Corporations are taking so many... Yeah. Bands. People are complaining about it in Seattle because it's getting like yeah. it's it's getting overrun yeah, yeah. With, uh, with Indians. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's a lot. You're not kidding, bro. We would have, uh, for a couple of corporations that I worked for, dude, there, there was... They, they were bringing on Indians, man. If they were, if they were anything IT, anything, it was, it was, it was, it was Indian. Yeah. So, I mean, something about the way their brains are wired, it's just, you know, they, uh, you know, they, they think, um, they think a little bit differently, you know? So, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm sure there's a lot of, you know, very talented developers in other areas, but you know, that's, that's what's kind of been on my radar a little bit. Pakistanis are not North Indians. Yeah, I guess I'm grouping them all in. They call them like Desi, like it's it's like Desi's or uh, D E S I, just that whole region. Yeah, Desi or something like that. Yeah, 
So I'm trying to keep it like, um, if you're going to deal with anyone, I suggest you go through someone you already know. There is a connection with someone there in India or Pakistan. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, I've got a few connections in India, um, you know, from my old, you know, BitConnect uh, connections. And so uh, they're, they're all in IT. So I'm, they, you know, if they're not the guy, they can point me in the right direction. And I think part of it is just being able, you know, just traveling out there. I just, right now with uh, Devesh getting arrested, uh, who's, you know, I guess a lot more involved with BitConnect than I, you know, originally thought. Um, and we'll have to see how that whole situation shakes out. I don't know if it's going to be the best idea for me to travel anywhere, um, and at least in that area right now. But definitely not coming back to the U.S. for a while. Like, oh. <laughs> it's... Uh, I mean, who, yeah, fuck, man. Like, I'm, I'm out there. Like, I'm, you know, I'm showing my face. I'm showing what I'm doing. And who knows what kind of agencies are going to come after me because they don't like what I'm doing. So, like, I already dealt with the FBI a little bit. And I, I don't want to deal with the SEC. I don't want to deal with the IRS. I don't want to deal with any of these other federal agencies or any of the civil lawsuits or whatever. Like, I'm safe here in Vietnam. Like, I don't have, you know, I don't have to worry about that unless I travel there. So, I was like... It's weird, man. Like the U.S. is, you know, touted as this place of, you know, freedom, but it's in a lot of ways, it's like the least free <laughs> place you can be. Is you got to be very careful about, you know, things that you're doing in the U.S. because everyone's so happy there. And um, so I don't know. Maybe things will shake out. You know, a few years from now or something, uh, I might change you're change my, my mind. Country. Hey, I'm f I'm from the U.S. too, man. <laughs> like, no, no, no. I mean, I just. I'm a, I just, I just got sick of it. That's, that's why like, you know, and people are wondering like why I feel the way I feel. I just like, you know, um, you know, you know what it is. I'll, I, um, I've, I've talked to you a little bit about ayahuasca. So I did, I did my first, uh, ayahuasca trip in uh, California. Um, this was, uh, last, saying, screw America. <laughs> that was pretty much it. It, it actually kind of scared the shit out of me. And, uh, part of it was basically like a lot of like kind of, at the time, like I had a lot of this kind of conspiracy theory type mindset and a lot of that was kind of in my head and like that really kind of came out in my trip. And I think like after that trip, like the, the thing that really came to mind was like, I just like, I feel safer just not being in the U S like I was dealing with a, a company there and then I had the, the opportunity to, to go out to Asia. And so I pursued that. And then lo and behold, I come back into the U S and I'm getting detained by the FBI, interrogated, like they were talking about taking, you know, um, you know, my crypto, uh, I had, I had a, a, a ton of cash on me, like this guy, like I wasn't carrying more than 10 grand in cash on me, but this guy was threatening to take, um, uh, take my cash. And I was like, fuck you, man. I just, I laid into this guy cause I knew he was full of shit. And then he ended up leaving the room. So, um, but then that's like, you know, yeah, you're making me nervous, Clover. Hey man, you're, you're, you got the right mindset. At least you're not showing your face. Like people don't know where you are. People don't know who you are, your name, like, I can't hide some of that stuff. I don't know, you know what I mean? It's Maybe. More, it's more for a costume. I, this is, um, but yeah, I also, you know, to avoid creepers and all kinds of shit and, like, the hate of, like, like, it, it's got, it's, it's got to be hard to be a famous person. It's hard enough as it is for us, like, at this level. Man, some, like, dude, I, there are some people that really say some, like, terrible things, like, Golly, especially, for example, I've been doing some content with the Oracle. People are like, you're going to rot now. You're going to rot. Like, I wonder why is Oracle has so, uh, so much. Like, I don't like, I, I, no, man. Fuck. Like, I don't, I don't. Helping people. If you go on my Discord, go on my Discord and see what people write. Look at people's results. Like, this is, my channel's the best channel on YouTube in crypto. I really believe it. Yeah, I think um, people you, people can really easily hide behind you know a keyboard and throw hate. And there was I, I was getting death threats and everything from people that were looking for someone to blame. You know, with the whole BitConnect uh, fiasco back in yep. er, earlier this year. But the thing was, is like none of those guys were like associated with me, had any contact with me, were underneath me, or like signed up with me. They were signed up with other people that just basically went into hiding, or you know. Like you had like Crypto Nick, like, you know, he, you know, 
like no one knows where that guy is anymore. Um, there's, yeah, I know, but people are going to come after him and attack him. And if they can't attack him, they're going to come after, you know, the next person they can, they can find. Um, a lot of other guys, you know, they, they went offline for a while. They've kind of come back, uh, a little bit, but, um, yeah, like, you know, I, I don't know if that's like the best example, but I'm just like, you know, kind of people are going to be looking for, um, you know, I, I feel like that kind of toxic culture is, a, is really like, that's heavy in America. And when you get outside of the country, like when I'm here, everyone's happy to see me here, man. Like I go around the streets, like they don't see like white Americans or Western Americans, like, you know, out here. And so like, they're happy to like, you know, uh, interact with me, even if it's just to practice their English, you know, cause that's a big thing out here is a lot of people want to learn English. And they want to, because um, that's it's really become like the uh, uh, the default language around the world. And because uh, like here in Vietnam, like outside of Vietnam, no one speaks Vietnamese. Like y you don't see Vietnamese being spoken in uh, maybe a little bit in the, that southern part of China or maybe in Cambodia, but not really. Like it's pretty much primarily in in Vietnam. So you know, but wow. everyone speaks English everywhere everywhere else. You seen something on the charts? Just kind of ranting, <laughs> but but yeah. So like, all right. So I would say so. The next important point for Bitcoin would be the sixty three seventies because that's was our last low, right? Mm -hmm. So it was long. You know, as we don't even as we don't really go below that. All right, I'm actually short on Bitcoin, so I actually want Bitcoin to go down. But with Ethereum, I have a little longing. So, like, with our uh, orders here, like, I'm seeing the liquidation price at, like, 58.45. So, perhaps, like, it could dump a little bit, but it would not touch. Come back. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I've sat on trades, dude, for days. But what I've learned is you want to sit on shorts. So, like. You want to sit on shorts? First long okay. I've made in, like, two weeks, you know? Mm hmm Just to give you an idea. Shorts, man. Short, short, shorts. Okay. It's. It, Sucks wanting Bitcoin. You're just like everybody else. Oh, Bitcoin, go up. Yeah. Bitcoin, go up. You know? So. Yeah. Um, if you come to my Discord channel, hundreds of people, they're making money on shorts. You know what I mean? Yeah. You've never seen, I've never seen so many people happy that Bitcoin's down ever. That's the <laughs> nice thing about shorting is you love it when bitcoin goes down you just get more and you're like yay hmm. yeah i didn't get a whole lot into shorting you know so that's uh like i guess there was um yeah there's a little bit of opportunity to do that on poloniex i never really got into that you know a whole lot it was kind of like with their like margin trading or however they had that set up but i got away from poloniex once they kind of switched over to um what was it now they're Owned by one of the big banks. Uh, what's their faces? Uh, gold, Goldman Sachs. Is it Goldman Sachs? Ooh, I think I it's Goldman know. Sachs. Goldman. Could be. I'm going to Google it now. Uh, Polonia. I think it's Goldman Sachs. I did a video on it. I should know this, but yeah, it's Goldman really? Sachs. Because, yeah, they back Circle. Like, I was, Circle was one of the first crypto, well, not the first, but like one of the first five cryptocurrency platforms that I really started um, getting in and using because it was like an alt I was just trying to get away from Coinbase, like anything but Coinbase. And uh, that seemed like a good alternative until they, um, they like took away, uh, uh, they took away uh, a lot of that functionality, at least for a while. And then, then they got Man, bought let out. Let me heat up some food real quick. I'm starving. All right. Let me check in with chat. I've been... May have contacts that you know from people from the northern part of India. Yeah, man. I, uh, 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 Rikai Kang, if you're still on, um, send me an email. I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to build some connections there. I've got a few. 
What's going on, Crypto Mad? Quan? Yeah, Trevon been getting a lot of heat. Yeah. Yeah, send, uh, send me an email or, um, gosh, I need to get like a, I guess I could do like a link or something and come in my Discord. Uh, that would be like another way. My email is uh, cryptoclover at gmail. BTC t tomorrow below 5K. What's Crypto Faces Discord? Um, I guess um, we're going to talk to him when he gets back, uh, see if we can get a link to that. He's got, uh, you're not going to be able to see it on my screen, but. You got a good size. You uh, you got a uh, link. Someone, some people here are wanting to link to your uh, Discord. They want to get in. This is on your uh, one of your latest videos. Clover, are you a trader or a hodler? Well, lately I've been a hodler because I'm a, I'm a bag holder. <laughs> what the fuck I am, Jesus! Oh my God, I got wrecked in uh, like I mean. It was bad enough losing losing as much money as I did in BitConnect, and then I took all of the money and I'll, I was I started um, I started basically diversifying, getting to all of these different altcoins, and then the whole market tanks. I lost I lost even more, you know, when that whole 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 shit happened. I started getting a little bit back once I started getting into these ETH projects. Um, some of those have been doing pretty well, so uh, I say like I've, I've climbed back a little bit, but. Uh, but yeah, I've, I've always been wanting to get more into trading. I just, I've been traveling so much. I've been just all over the place. Here's the YouTube thing. I found the YouTube thing with the music. Okay. All right. Let me, uh, come in here. YouTube. Oh shit. What the fuck? Sorry to put you off. No, man. Uh, I want to know this. All right. I'm in YouTube. Like. Okay. It's. YouTube.com slash audio library slash music. Everyone says this music's terrible too, by the way. Your music? This music, the YouTube free music. Oh, yeah. Like a meme. Yeah, I mean, I think I've looked at this before a little bit, and oh, it was yeah. it was hard for me to find... Some, but they, I, but they're um, copyright free, right? They're you know, uh, roy royalty free. Yes. And that's what you need. But so th these are tracks. Like I don't know. Um, I like putting I like putting music on and not having to think about it. That's kind of why I like just they like, picking an instrumental and just putting it on repeat. And uh, I mean, for some people, maybe it gets maybe it gets old. But for me, I you know, it's just background music. So yeah, I'll check that out a little bit. Um, if we're gonna see one of these like circle dumps, or so like, what I've noticed is lately, Bitcoin has actually been on like a bullish diagonal from left to right, right, like tilted upwards. Sure. And when it's been tilted upwards, it does go up. You know, it comes down, obviously, eventually, right? But like, it is slightly tilted. And like, uh, for the past like week, I'm always thinking like, God, it'll just crack down any time. And then like, it'll pump, it'll pump $100, $200. And so I've noticed as a trend recently that like it's been when it's tilted up like this like it does pump you can get longs in um like i said this is the first long i've, I've entered in a little in a little while you know i guess i think would be another good thing to kind of bring in to like this type of ta analysis or however you're picking trades is also the news because like the etf did come out and you know that pretty much wrecked I guess a lot of people that, uh, you know, were, you know, holding, you know, various positions or whatnot, but, um, like same thing, like, um, for instance, like yesterday when the FOMO long contract, like when that 
dinged on my phone, like that changed. Every, I, I, I had to drop everything and basically just focus on this. You didn't Did it cash in. Oh, you didn't. The, the first round of the FOMO long um, uh, ended. You didn't know that. What? Oh, you didn't know that. Does anyone know? Who yeah. Oh, you didn't hear about this? Okay. So basically, uh, some guy uh, was was putting in um, like a ton of gas. Like I guess he put in a key. It was like the timer. It has to be in a position where like the timer is less than five minutes. So it, it it was doing that for a while, but there was people that were scripting. Uh, buying keys like towards the end, so it just wasn't ending. They get stuck. Their transactions get stuck. Well, I guess some guy put in like thirty ETH worth of gas or something, and and like maxed out like the uh, uh, the contract because uh, I guess the contract is holding a certain amount of um, uh, of gas to like process the orders or whatnot. I'm not entirely sure how that works, but basically they uh, uh, they made it so that the uh, they they basically kind of like. Um, hacked the uh, the FOMO long contract in a way to make it so that others couldn't put in keys. So people were yeah, trying to put in it. keys. Yeah, and he got it. And so then did um, they win the game, or are they giving him shit? Uh, I mean, he won lo- like over ten thousand ETH. And as soon as he got that ETH, he started basically kind of like you know, I uh, I was watching it on the blockchain. Like he started splitting it up, and he was sending four thousand here, four thousand there, a thousand here, and uh, was. Well, good um, for that guy, he won the game. He gamed it. Right? It's it's a it's a developer's game. Yeah, like I mean, whoever whoever did that, like they they knew what they were doing. And part of it, I think, was they may have been experimenting, maybe even with a short game. Um, you know, once they kind of ha- had it figured out, and they probably saw, perhaps they may, maybe they were able to pull some analytics on uh, the gas and the contract and how they were able to uh, kind of manipulate it. But a lot of money, bro. You know that like there was people. Working on getting it. Hang on, let me grab this. Oh, this is a uh, crypto face on uh, on on my stream. So uh, if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. If you want to get more into like this type of um, technical analysis and trading, I'm going to start getting into this a little bit more. Uh, you know than I uh, normally have. Just buy XRP and hold. Big things coming. Yeah, um, I that's one of my bags. I'm holding. I'm holding a lot of Ripple. When did you start investing in crypto? So I started in uh, 2013. Uh, well, basically, yeah, it was like towards the end of 2013 with that first uh, bubble that happened when Bitcoin hit a thousand bucks. Pretty much once it started trending up towards a thousand dollars, like I was watching that whole thing unfold on on the news on uh, CNBC and and everything and it was um, that's what really kind of got me obsessed with it I just became obsessed with it to the point where it was affecting my my job at the time I was a electricity trader and uh, you know working with a, a pretty large outfit there so that's um you know that's that's what I was doing so what are you making money from these days uh, right now it's been a lot of the ETH projects has been kind of where I've been, um, like those are just kind of like some passive income, uh, streams, but, uh, I was making quite a bit on the FOMO project until that ended. And so, uh, got to find some, some new gigs. So this is what I'm so doing. There a new, there's a new long game that started, right? Yeah. Round two. So I got in on that. I put in like, tw- when did it start? Uh, yesterday, so basically there was like an hour grace period and like there was a lot of confusion I think when it first happened. That's why like when I got that, uh, saying I got that ding on my phone and the, the contract ended, I was like, what the fuck? You know, so I had to log in and see what was going on, like figure out, cause I knew the second round was coming. Um, and like, it, you know, the thing is, is to get in and on those contracts as early as you can. So you're in the U S so you were asleep. It was probably like four or 5 AM when it happened. Um, wow, there's only 1,275 ETH in there, dude. I need to throw some money in there, I think. Yeah, I mean, like, the first couple of days, I think, is the, is the time to get in. If, if you know, you probably get a, you probably get your return on your investment by getting in, at least in the first couple of days. After that, I don't know, it's, 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 uh, we'll see shaky. How, how much attention this one gets, dude. Like, you I'm, know, I, I call it Flop 3D for a reason. I call it Flop 3D <laughs> in my Discord. Yeah. Um, but I was in P3D, you know, 
way back when. I actually got out of it, put it in the arm at sixty cents. You know, so. Yeah, I did the same thing. I got in around sixty cents in arb and uh, did did well. The problem is, though, is I didn't get like I was in a bot uh, at sixty cents, and then you know I didn't pull out until like a dollar fifty. But I was, yeah. But I mean, you know, it is what it is. I'm still uh, I'm still up on arb. So every like with the total amount of money that I've invested in arbitraging, like I've made money. So um, like even if if the like say the worst case scenario, say the platform were to like scam out or something like that. Like I still technically like made money, you know, um, uh, at least, but a lot of the money that I pulled out, like I pulled out to put into the, the FOMO, the first round of the FOMO project, which ended. And now, you know, I've got to like, uh, basically kind of, um, I kind of reinvested, like I put about 30 ETH in, uh, I've got about 40,000 keys. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to get too many more keys, but, um, but like I made, I made, I don't know, about 1500 bucks in the last 24 hours. We're pumping, we're pumping, baby. We're pumping, I think. Let's go. Let's go. We're fucking pulling off that line. All right. That was Bitcoin. Let's get Ethereum. There's a big wall at 6,400. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. All right. So Ethereum. Let me look at the Bitcoin. Let's get Bitcoin. 6,400, 1.8. Eh. That's nothing. You'll see. That'll start. That'll start moving. But 6,400 is a psych line. It's a psych line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude. It's good to see some green candles. Let's go, baby. Sorry to cut you off. No, man. That's um the uh, uh I want to make sure that I'm kind of like at least initially just just kind of looking at this the right way. You know, I'm uh uh cuz I have, you know, I've got a little bit of a background just I don't have uh as big of a background as you do. Clover. You'll be all right. Yeah, I just I just going to take me a little while to get the hang of it. So like the same thing happened like when I got into like trading bots and building those and everything like I didn't know shit about trading bots and I didn't want to spend money on because with Hasbot you got you had to put in like uh, at the time it was like 0.3 Bitcoin or something to like buy the software and I wasn't going to do it but uh, that, that's when these guys in California like they had already bought the software but they, he just didn't have enough time or you know just enough know how to figure it out. And that's when I came down there and started working with him and it took me about a month, but I figured it out. That was the first time, dude, with those bots that I ever, like, did anything on a computer with a black screen, you know, in the black, wow, I've been spilling ravioli shit all over my pants. <laughs> mm. what, what were you saying? Uh, the black screen? Uh, oh, yeah, like programming shit or, you know, soft coding, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember the point I was going to make, dude. I got sidetracked. I mean, I was in it for like, you know, that was the thing is like, I was, I was in it hardcore for about a month and a half, two months or so. And then that, that's when I basically got the opportunity to go to Asia. And so I just, I kind of abandoned the entire thing and they were a little bit upset with me about that. Cause you know, I mean, those guys were, um, you know, paying for everything for me. Right. Like they were, you know, uh, uh, setting me up in a, uh, well, it was an Airbnb, but um, they were setting me up and you know taking care of me and and whatnot. You have connections, Clover. You know what I mean. Everyone is. It's when Clover's in town, he doesn't have to pay for shit. <laughs> That's it's a it's a perk, I guess. It, it helps. Um, but yeah, I mean, like once I. Uh, once I kind of left, I got away from it. But that's when I was getting a little bit more into like you know technical analysis. Like I was, do I was starting to get into that leading up to getting into uh, uh, developing trading bots. Like I had a strong interest in it, and um, that's kind of when I was. My YouTube channel was still pretty young. Like I didn't have, um, I didn't have over a thousand subscribers at that point. I was just uh, still just trying to build my channel. But once I started going out to Asia. Um, yeah, how did you get popular? Like, where did you come from? When did you, like, when you started YouTubing? It was really Big Connect. Big Connect I mean, like, I, once I started, like, uh, started doing, like, I think one of the, one, once I started doing the tours of the Big Connect offices, my channel really started to blow up. Because, like, and I, I kind of knew that was going to happen, right? Because I'm the only person doing that. And that's what people wanted to see. They wanted to see the offices. They wanted to see the legitimacy of the platform. They wanted to see... Uh, a little bit more behind the scenes with BitConnect. And I still got a lot of unpublished video 
that I haven't put out. And, um, you know, considering, you know, putting some of that stuff out here um, at some point, uh, that's kind of where I was looking to get some office help so I can get someone to help me with like the video editing. Because that's really what it comes down to is, is chopping up all this video I got. But uh, I got to back some of the stuff up because like I'm the only person that's got video of the, uh, uh, the first meeting um, with, sure. uh, with BitConnect. So uh, it's kind of interesting when you go back and you take a look at some of that stuff. You know, now looking back on things, so I'm, um, seems so long ago, huh? Jeez. Yeah, but that's that's really kind of how my you know, my channel really started it's growing. It's been a year for me since BitConnect since I started. I got started what September, August last yeah. year. Yeah, I mean it's August now. Like that's a year a year ago. Like I was out here in Vietnam, basically, uh, you know, exploring the BitConnect office, like meeting like thousands, well not thousands, but probably like hundreds of people from Vietnam. Like the team with BitConnect was huge, so there was thousands of people uh, in BitConnect in Vietnam. But you know, it was a huge, huge community, and it was pretty cool. Like when I came out here to Vietnam, like I was the first like English speaking, you know, uh, Westerner uh, guy in crypto, and so like everyone was ecstatic to like just just be around me, and uh, it was uh, <laughs> it was it was kind of interesting, but they. They just the um, guy everybody liked. They, they we didn't even was like a lot of them didn't even really necessarily follow my channel. They just knew that I was like you know um, holy shit this just has big to be in air. big in uh, crypto and BitConnect. What are you looking at? Well, coming down. My ARB wallet. Uh, Apparently, I made uh, seven hundred and fifty-seven ARB today. <laughs> I'm not gonna touch that. Let me text Daddy David. Dad. So you got a you got some sort of glitch in your account where you got like seven hundred arb in there. Yeah, seven hundred and fifty-seven for my uh, earn arb today. Hmm. Take a picture. Does anyone else uh, in my stream here? Does anyone else have a crazy amount of arb in their wallet? I'll check on the chat here. Clover, I don't. Anyone? They can't can't hear crypto face. I don't understand why why can't these guys hear? I thought I just like. I don't understand. I don't know. That's so strange. I have to go back and check my stream to figure out like why they can't hear you. I got the volume all the way up. My people can hear me. Can your people hear me? You guys hear? Uh, yeah, they can hear. I don't know, man. I might have something to do with like. Um, I don't get it. So I'll figure it out. Damn, that's seven hundred fifty-seven arb. Sure does look tasty. <laughs> you know. Well, I would say probably leave that alone. Yeah, no, I knew. What the heck? Now it's even. Damn, this shit's Clover and OBS, do you have the computer audio on? Let me check my OBS. Yeah, I mean. I mean you guys can hear the music all right, right? The voice is really low. Like, fuck, man, I just had this. Uh, let's look at the exchange. Okay, is the exchange? I hope the exchange is locked if this is going on. Oh, they can't even hear the music. <laughs> no music, damn. There's all kinds of uh, IT issues. They're saying it's low on your your channel too. Really? Maybe it's. I don't know. I haven't changed anything. Add something in OBS. Audio input. Um, 
Did that help? I just did an audio input capture. You want to uh, testing one two, one two testing. Uh, is the EQ working on OBS? It did something there. I don't know if that worked or not. Yeah, my people are saying we're. Most of my people are saying we're okay. This is why I need like uh, some office. I just need I need someone to help me like with uh, some of the tech shit that I don't like. I got a couple of guys like here in Vietnam. They're they're like really good at this type of stuff. I was just love to like work with them and get get them um, in uh, in my office here, kind of working together and get some collabs going. So I don't know. I added an audio input. Doesn't look like it. Maybe it's um, doing much. Okay, I put out. We're doing a quick update on a bot payout code. Thanks, Bill. Just all right. So uh, yeah, look. We'll probably just remember. I, like I was like, you know, we might just snake on this line, bro. We might just chill on this line. Mm -hmm. and break down to the next one, right? If you watch like the very ends of the candles, like the hair hairs of the candles, you know, that's a possibility. We're just chilling, man. This is it. This is why you set your marks and leave, bro. You know, like this volume's low, activity's low, all the action's pretty much done for now. Now when you just set your set your marks, set it and forget it, dude. Mm -hmm. And you wake up the next day to position close and happy days. Well, yeah, like like I was saying, like I'm trying to I'm trying to get like this set up for Bitcoin or you know maybe a few of the other um, uh, these these coins. What I, what I don't really understand is maybe you can enlighten me on this. Like if you come in here, um, and we pull up Bitmex on um, Coin Market Cap. It's just showing Bitcoin, but you're able to trade like some of the other altcoins. You know why that is. Because it maybe has something to do with like their internal, like. Um, so you're saying it just shows Bitcoin and not the other shit coins? Yeah, like you see my screen. It's because they only accept Bitcoin, and they give you their. Technically, you're trading off of their shit token. XBT. So it's all just XBT. So okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know, but like uh, that was kind of one of the things I was going to show here a little bit, like just looking at the volumes, like we're seeing 3.5 billion. In trading, and that's three and a half times the cl the next closest exchange, Binance. But it's not showing up in the exchange. You know, I'll say this too, dude. So on, like, even on your video, on um, any time like I do a collab with about Bitmax, their channel gets flooded in comments about Digitech. Yeah. Oh, Bitmax is good. Oh, screw Bitmax. Like people are already hate. Why are people so hateful? Jeez. But like, I'm I'm sort of looking forward to it. The way it kind of looks. It doesn't look as Bitmex is backed and created by some institutional, heavy hitting professional guys, you know? And like the way Digitex kind of looked was a little cheaper. And so we'll see how, but we'll, we'll see though, it's, if it's truly decentralized and like the fees are much lower, they want you to trade with their shitcoin, which you do with XBT technically, like I wonder, but Bitmex. I like Bitmex. We're gonna be using Bitmex, but for all the digi digi bike people, we'll we'll be checking that out. Too. I I got a bunch of uh, comments flooded. Like sometimes it can be like a little bit of like I I my radar kind of goes off a little bit because sometimes like you know I'll get flooded. I'm sure you get this too, like Odyssey and like Zilliqua and like some of these other Dude, coins. Filters, bro. Well, yeah. I finally figured it out how to do it. Yeah, I it, it, it took me a while to you know kind of get that set up too. Like this, some of them still sneak through. Like I get like I think it's like the uh, like something. It's a Gram token. I think Gram token's the next one that's been going through. But yeah, like the like when we did that stream. Um, I, I don't know, I probably had at least three or four people comment about Digitex. But, like, this is the one I'm, I'm focused on learning first. I'll look at some of the other ones after I get this one figured out. But I got to figure out the fucking mic and volume and some of this other stuff first. So, because, like, you know, it would be a lot easier if I just plugged in 
uh, plugged in, and, well, I guess that wouldn't figure, that wouldn't do anything, because like if I plugged in the mic for me, I mean, if my audience can hear me fine, that's, that's not the issue, they're trying to hear you, so it's some sort of internal setting I gotta fix. Like, I did this audio, fuck, man, I don't know. Yes, I killed that view. It's like audio. On OBS, what is the mixer doing? Um, the uh, uh, the mixer is like it's looking fine on my my end. Like it's, I know you guys can't see this, but uh, maybe I could do. Let me get out of this here. Uh, Crypto Liquid, maybe you can help me here. Let me um, window capture. I'm gonna switch this up here. Uh, I don't know. My microphone people is like the same, the same headset, same everything. Okay. All right. So can you guys see that? I just switched to OBS. Yeah. So here, uh, I'm in OBS here. Let's set this up here. So, like I had the, um, like you guys can see the mixer is fine, right? You can see down here the mixer is, is, is responding. I guess I got to figure out like what, uh, maybe it has something to do with, because um, you're connected through Discord. It's, so it's got to be something through Discord. And it used to show me, um, used to show me like your you were on here a second ago when you have the video sharing it like changes things around maybe people are used to me yelling to you know at the microphone <laughs> so I can do it. connection info you know I wonder if we should get one of those big fuzzy microphones that everyone else has. I got windbreakers on on inside. Like you guys are inside in a YouTube <laughs> studio. What do you have a windbreaker there for? Too? I've got one. I just I don't I don't use it enough. That's... I want one that takes up half my screen, like on purpose, dude. I just want a big ass microphone. Audio input capture is set to your computer. So I have it set in my built-in microphone or default. I don't know if you can see that. It's got default and built-in microphone. The cog wheel. All I'm saying is default and built-in microphone. And like I've got music playing, but they can't hear they can't hear my music. He switched to default. Yeah, let's do that. How do you do that? Switch. All right, switch, switch to default. default. It was, it was on default, default before, though, when it wasn't, wasn't working. working. You guys can see those settings here. You watched Deadpool, huh? I never watched that movie. I never seen it. 
No. Oh shit, I poke her time, sorry. Not turn. Do you play poker at all? Lower? Yeah, Tex. Nah, Tex hold him. I I would say I'm more Tex hold him than blackjack. Yeah, yeah, man. You know, everyone always says they're good at blackjack. Just like everyone says they're good at poker, but I suck at blackjack, man. I just for some reason I'm just even if I have one of those little card things that tells you how to play, I suck. I'm. Yeah, I'm a. I'm not all that great. The blackjack either. My brother, though, man. I don't know if able to push the top. Can you switch default echoes? Switch back. You're, you're getting an echo. Switch back, okay. Switch back here to built in microphone. Alright, so I switched that back. Man, I don't know. Yeah, I was just saying my uh, my brother, man. My brother's really good at blackjack. He just uh, he he's he just like he always teases me. He's just like, man, the casino's just free money. And he just he he goes in there and just makes money playing back blackjack. I know guys that do that too, man. But like, I just I never could never. I just I don't know. There's more skill. I feel like in Texas Hold'em, like you know, I that's 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 why like I you know I. I I feel like I'm more in control. Mm hmm. Yep. You are. I guess I'm just unlucky at blackjack. Uh, like, I didn't even have this audio input capture on here even last time. Order. Yeah, I know it's kind of boring right now to trade, but we're not in a window. We'll have to, um, and it happens sometimes, I don't know, we'll do something for sure, like when there's some action or there's like a window. Yeah. And it's certainly a lot of fun. When it's pumping, when the market's moving. When it's going up and down, you know, it's in a window and it goes bing, bing. You know, and it's like, oh, it comes in a trend. And you're like, okay, should we make this risky trade? Fuck it, let's do it. You know, <laughs> and you win it all. You, your gains, you come out on top. But shorting is the way to go, man. I'm telling you, like, if, like, shorting is the way to go. Yeah. In fact, let's take a look at the old Bollinger Band. Let's pull up some Bollinger Band. Those are okay. All right. You know, sometimes it's fun just to type in random shit in the indicators and see what it is. You know? And then read about it. I'm gonna switch the switch my screen back. Cause I couldn't figure out OBS, so maybe I need uh, a, you know that other program. Maybe that'll do better. Yeah, OBS sucks, dude. I hate them. They have bugs they haven't fixed for years. Big bugs. Cockroaches. What's the weather like out there? It's the wet season, so it's like usually pretty hot, and then uh, like kind of that two, three, four o'clock time period, it'll just start, you know, uh, raining pretty hard. Kind of when I guess the humidity builds up. It's 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 very comparable to like Florida or something, where it just you get those afternoon showers. Um, how come you don't do any videos? You only live stream lately, right? You don't do any, like, Me? Um, videos, yeah. I, videos, like, I, I used to do videos. They just, it takes a lot of time with, like, the, uh, the editing, you know? I mean, it's, it's, it just, it takes a lot of time, and it's just easier for me to, just to get on and stream, you know? It's like, uh, I, yeah. I don't think a lot of people really understand, like, how, time-intensive video editing is like I've got a bunch of videos I've been 
I was I was cutting up a, a shit ton of videos on my damn iMac before the thing fried on me, you know. And so like I had all these videos. I was literally like getting ready to post these videos, and the, my whole computer fried. I just got my computer back. So part of it is just kind of get my setup a little bit better. I want to get more into doing like edited videos because those are probably better. I feel like I lose subscribers because people don't want to see all my streams all the time, especially if they're showing up like after the fact. But I, I'm not really as concerned with that. Like, I'll get more professional with what I'm doing later. Right now, I'm just kind of just documenting what I'm doing. So, if you're following me, that's you know that's what I'm doing. I'll get I'll get better. I'm just right now, I just um, I got other things that are you're supposed higher to be priority. Referral whoring, bro. Me? <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been doing that as much, but. Um, like that was what I was thinking about doing, uh, showing like all, like breaking out all of the different programs and things I'm in so I can at least give people like a list. So if you're not in some of those, you can, uh, you can take a look and see if it's something you want to get into, but I don't make as much money from that really. You know, I, I, uh, and part probably because I don't really shill it that hard. If I get into something, I, you know, I let people know about it and they can use my link if they want. Uh, yeah, and that's that's one like I haven't been really talking about as much lately. I'm waiting for um, this guy uh, Frank to come out here. We're gonna go over to the office and talk to him a little bit because they've been doing a bunch of different things. Um, they're like, it's like a mining company that's trying to like do a lot of other stuff. So they got like a credit card. They got like, um, you know, uh, they they're building partnerships. Like they just merged with another company and. They're merging with an, uh, 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 like a company in Florida, I believe, and a company in Japan. Um, so they're they're making moves, um, but uh, you know, I think that I want to um, get a little bit more clarification on some things before I really start, you know, telling people to get in. And part of it too is like um, I was signed up underneath a girl that I was with, and um, we, we got into a huge argument, and she really fucking pissed me off. And so, like, I don't really want to, I don't want to show it that hard necessarily because, like, she's, she's going to get a lot of money from that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. so I'm, yes, there's a lot of you guys, you have that problem, Oracle's got problems, everyone's got these, like, ex-women and that are just, they're just coming after them, man. Like, yeah, well, this, geez. this girl, like, she fell in love with me and I was, I was with her for, like, like four, four, maybe five months. And then I feel like she was trying to take it to the next level. And I'm like, no, I'd like, and then, um, I, you know, I was being a little bit promiscuous and she knew I was, and I was trying to basically explain to her that we weren't really like boyfriend, girlfriend, like we were together and we were whatever. It was just, you know, it was just a, a messy situation. And then she, uh, she went on the, so what she did that really pissed me off. And I basically, like told her to go fuck herself after this was um, there was a huge Facebook group over here in Vietnam. There was like um, I want to say it's probably about fourteen or fifteen thousand people, and it's all women, women Vietnamese women dating Western men. It's like that's the premise of the Facebook group, and um, so they like sh like it, you can't get into it unless like you're a Vietnamese woman, right? So they kind of they're very protective about it. Like you have to like with with being a Facebook group that's that big. It's a it's a Facebook. It, it's a Facebook group that, like, basically they t like it's all Vietnamese women talking about dating Western men, right? So, like, I like I can't do it getting in, you know, because they're gonna look at my picture, right? And they're gonna be like, you know, no, you're not coming in. And they actually actually ask you questions and things like that. So it's an exclusive group, but because it's an exclusive group, like that's a pretty big sized group for, uh, for, uh, you know, Vietnam. And like, you know, like I was saying before, like, you know, Vietnam, like not a whole lot of people speak Vietnamese outside of Vietnam. So that, that's a big group for Vietnam. And so anyways, like they, they'll also talk shit about guys. So like if guys are, you know, going around and like, you know, sleeping with a bunch of women or something like that, like they'll say, they'll put, they'll post in there. Yeah. And they'll basically be like, you know, be careful of this guy or, or whatever. So Anyways, that's what that's what she did. She went in that group and just blasted me. And I found out about it because of the girl, the other girl that I was kind of seeing at the time um, was in that group too. 
So like these two girls that I was kind of dating at the time were both in that group. And so she, she put like some pictures of the woman that I was dating in that group. And that's when she got all upset and she, she messaged me and she's like, why is this woman like, you know, talking about me and posting pictures about me? And she's a model too. So like, you know, when some of those pictures are being shared, she like, they're like, she gets really upset when her modeling pictures get shared because they're, she's very private about that kind of stuff. And so, um, yeah, so it was, it was a real messy situation. Um, but you know, it is what it is. I, uh, um, but now, but I'm, I'm signed up underneath. I'm still signed up underneath her. You know, I got to see that contract through. And so I, uh, um, like, I don't really want, like, she was making money off of me, off of me, like, building connections and networks underneath her, and, uh, so I'm switching over to Frank, and Frank's, like, the guy that merged, like, one of his companies with Asama, so, like, I'm gonna try to basically partner with him and get underneath him, but, um, we gotta set it up, and, like, he needs to come out to Vietnam to do that, and so he's, he's getting in here this weekend. Um, he might actually be taking over my apartment. Um, and that way, um, I'd be freed up to travel if I wanted to. Like, that's what I was thinking about. Like, he was going to sublease my apartment, and uh, I was going to go to India. But I don't know if that's going to happen. You know, we'll see. So, we almost want to see a pullback to 63.70. Why do we want to uh, see that? Well, because we're approaching, like, an end of another... Let me send you a picture. V mix Clover is free. I use it. I'll have to take a look at that V mix. Thanks, Crypto Liquid. I had a um, one of my exes run me over with my car one time. Well, it didn't run me over. My car was low, and so but she hit me with my car. <laughs> Hold on. Well, she asked if she's like, do you love the, you love the fucking car? And she, she was in my fucking car driving. Um, well, not driving, but she was in the driver's seat. And uh, she didn't ask if I loved her. She's like, you love the fucking car. <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah. I, now I, I have a fucking peg for a leg. <laughs> I don't have a peg for a leg. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I was more more used to dealing with that in America, like or irrational women in America, um, you know, as opposed to being over here. But uh, the one that one woman I was with, like. She just, uh, um, yeah, I mean, when a, when a girl, like, falls in, falls in love with you, like, it, it can get a little bit messy if you're not in love with her. Mm. So. It can be messy if you fall in love. And, oh, you That know. too, yeah. It goes both ways. And that actually kind of happened, because, like, you know, like, I was, I was, because I was saying I was I was dating both those girls. Like one of them was a model, so you know obviously she's very very attractive. Um, you know she has a lot of personality and and some you know some other bullshit that I had to deal with, and that's ended up being why like we ended up just basically uh, like she you know she, like in America you've got some of these these women that are um, uh, very I mean. Uh, they they're very influenced by like kind of media and stuff like that and uh, yeah, like so much yeah the media is the culture bro it's the culture and they're kind of like you know fourteen year old girls walking around with those uh, Yoda tight ass pants on I'm like what are you thinking dude like six months ago I was pulling out of a gas station and I saw this girl get out and her butt cheeks were hanging out and I was like whoa and then I looked up. And it was like a 14-year-old girl. I was like, what? And then her mom got out. Oh, I rolled down my window. I was like, excuse me. I was like, listen, you like need to pull, tell that girl to pull those shorts down. Like, what are you thinking? What are, and she was like, oh. Uh. She just looked at me like a deer in the headlights. They had Starbucks coffees. You need to pull that girl's shorts down. <laughs> crazy. They're, uh, 
they're I mean they're just kind of you know uh, uh, American culture is very like sexualized in a lot of ways and so they're so you'll see people are kind of playing into that and yeah. uh like this girl that I was that I was with I mean like she's all about her her Facebook and her Instagram um yeah. photos and that is kind of thing Asia dude I see um, videos of like, like, what's that? Sean in Wonderland. You ever watch Sean in Wonderland? No, I don't know what that is. Oh man, you need to. Listen, <laughs> don't you YouTube look up Sean in Wonderland. All right, let me take oh, a look. Oh, we just fight, dude. We just get our cell order. Oh, dude. We, we just get our fucking cell order. Check your ETH. Uh. Oh yeah! Wow. Bro, you were fucking pumping, bro. I told you it's the end of the fucking trend, baby. Boom. You're fucking go. That's how you make the trade. That's trade bit max, baby. Yeah, Woo! I I had my cell at sixty four thirty. I don't think it it filled uh, just yet because it, it's it's coming back down. Hey, it's right there though, man. It's right there. Mine just shot right up and scooped mine up. What did I sell it at? Mine was at six two seventy four fifty hmm. for ETH. Oh, for ETH? You're looking at ETH? Yeah. Well, oh was, shit. Yeah, that was. ETH. Do I have Bitcoin here? Oh yeah, I'm in a Bitcoin short. Yeah, I was at 270, 275. It looks like it didn't hit that. Ooh, it came super close, bro. Yeah. Twenty cents. It's about to, about to. I might, I might long this, dude. I'm gonna, because if this is a breakout, like I'm, I'm gonna enter a smaller, a smaller long. We're gonna long at the top of this little trend and see if it breaks out. Maybe. Now I'm having second. Thoughts. Having second thoughts. Yeah, some of the some of the like, talking about th these women and stuff. I feel more comfortable doing it now because I know they're not on here. I, some of the some of these ladies they still watch my streams and stuff. Um, but they uh, like they don't I, they're not probably tuning in like to this. So that's why like if if uh, if you've been watching me, um, I open up a little bit more towards the end of my streams. Like I'll say stuff on there. I you know maybe wouldn't necessarily say in like a shorter vid or video or something. I haven't been doing that on like th my 30 minute ones, but, um, but I, I just did that recently. Like I did one by like the BitConnect Indian connection. And I just, um, uh, someone right towards the end of my video was talking about Glenn and, uh, I just went on this huge negative rant on Glenn, just telling, telling people kind of what I really thought about him. And, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, I did get some contact back from that, which was interesting. Which I can't get into too much, but um, but sounds like uh, someone in his circle heard about that, <laughs> like, reached yeah, out to me. So you were telling me, yeah. But uh, but yeah, like I mean, I uh, I open up a little bit more, like in, in the later parts of my stream, because usually th those are like my um, the people that are really watching me, like the people that are. Uh, uh, you know, that have been following me, or, or you know, follow me a little bit more um, regularly. So I'll, I'll, uh, open up a little bit more about my personal life. If people want to hear about it. So we were, um, you know what, dude, I wanted to bring this up too, but we got lost. So the Bollinger bands are tightening up. So we were due for a breakout too, man. I was going to say something too, but like we were talking about something else about so like, you see how the Bollinger band was tightening up. So yeah. we were either going to break up, or, you know, and now that we're pushing up in the Bollinger Band, dude. So you see that volume though? There was a ton of volume. That huge spike. Yeah, man. We had a little bing, had a little spike. Now I'm telling you, it comes out of nowhere. Like, do you see? Like but that's T A, man. Like that's how you read it. You draw the triangle. Like we had the support. We were coming up. Like we're tilted. It's it's bullish, bro. We follow the trends. We use the Bollinger Bear bullish all the shit, bro. That's it. Hiking the sheet candles, man. Like. Boom. And you called it. You picked this trade. You said you wanted to long. Did you not? Yeah. Did you not? It was, that's what I was, uh, like, when I know when I first got in, like, uh, I think it was when, I guess you can't see my mouse, but we were seeing that kind of that red arm coming down. I was like, and with the Bollinger Bands, it was touching the bottom of the Bollinger Bands. So it's like, mm -hmm. naturally, you're going to look at that and say, hey, you know, it's, yeah. that's trending up. But yeah, there was a huge, there was like 2 million on the um, on the order books, and that ju it just blew through that, and that that's where all that volume came from. Yeah. So so 
And these candles are still, we'll see if it pumps, pumps again here, man. You know, for it like, a, I don't know if it's just going to be just one. So I re-entered in another ETH trade. Um, and I set my exit at 277.05. What did I enter at, actually? Let me take a look at Ethereum. I'm still on, I'm still on Bitcoin, yeah, so. And then. Actually, I might want to put it at 275.30 and just scalp it. Just scalp it. We're scalping. Let's see. Okay, so it's tightening up. All right, I'll be uh, right back. Good shit, dude. That's how we do it, man. That's how we do it. Be right back. My orders were close to film. It's the poker game of life, red or black. <laughs> Glenn asked Trevon, you making more money than me? I don't know about that. Glenn was making way more than Trey. Uh, uh, Riki Kang, you still on here? You're still on my stream? I did see your email. Um, gosh, I, I forgot to respond to that, so I apologize. Let me know if you're still on my stream.
Clover, do you have a mixer? Um, no, I, maybe I should get one. If like an analog one for your road mic. No, if you have a recommendation on like one I should buy or something, um, I'm all ears because I um, maybe that would be a good solution of kind of what I'm dealing with. All right, let's see an update here. Let's zoom into the one minute. You still there? Yeah. Um, I was uh, talking to a few people in my audience. Uh, so uh, I guess the arbitraging website's down right now. Did you get that uh, update? You might have actually triggered it by, you know, telling David about what was going on. Um, no, I think they already knew because they, well, they said, I know they said they were working on something, updating. Yeah, they probably. Um, and yeah, I sent him a picture. So, um, but Barb's been fucking been good that daily. I got, I mean, I pretty much got everything in ABOC, dude. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, so when it pumped up to like four bucks or something, you kind of got in and just stayed in? Um, I think there was a pump to like $3 and I had like five grand left for 4,500 sitting in ARB. Hmm. I'm like, you know what? Like I wanted more daily, daily income. So I just threw it in there because I don't see... I don't know, I really don't see, like, our pumping, pumping up yet, you know? I think when the bull market, maybe in, like, two months, you know, or whenever, you know, the market turns, like, overall, that's, that's going to be the time to hold, just hold the coin. But, yeah. I, and I, I, I don't know, I earn, I earn a good amount. Um, I just love the daily earnings. I mean, it's... It's pretty. It's BitConnect 2.0. It's really what it is. It's kind of a more transparent version of, of BitConnect, um, and like that's I think what a lot of people were searching for, especially when the platform went down, was a kind of a passive income platform. Like I've been exploring like so many other platforms. I got you know scammed and burned by a few. Some of them you know took off and uh, you know so. But the arbitraging one is really the one I, I'm um, I'm really interested in because. It's, um, you know, just having a lot of the uh, conversations I have with David and just kind of getting a little bit more behind that platform and seeing just a little bit more of just the makeup of like how, you know, how it's set up, like what they're doing. And now that I, I have like a little bit more behind the scenes of, of what, what's going on there, I'm, um, uh, for one, I'm a lot more comfortable. Uh, but I'm still thinking that the, you know, they're they're still like confused um, as to why like people are selling at some of the low prices. Like they were really trying to kind of figure that out. They've limited some different things on the website uh, to pr uh, prevent like manipulation because they were having you know some people uh, they were just putting in like very small orders to kind of drive the price down. And um, there was I guess a strategy behind that. I didn't get too much into that, but. Uh, but yeah, like I'm, I've been holding all those coins. I don't, I don't have anything in ABOT. I've been kind of waiting for the next breakout, the next uh, pump in price, and it hasn't come in like in like over a month. So, um, but uh, that's all right. You know, I figure, I figure, you know, it's I'm, I'm gonna wait for the next pump, and once it kind of comes up to like maybe over like eight bucks or you know somewhere between eight to ten bucks. That's when I might take, you know, a majority of what I've got and throw it in a bot. Got some people in the chat that were following our trade. It's a quick little easy, easy scalp, you know. We're kind of chilling in like a weird zone right now. It's like we're hovering like a matrix robot, you know. Oh, okay. Could just slowly go down from here, do nothing. One of my orders filled. Oh, nice. So yeah. So I had I had one at sixty four thirty, and so that. Where, where, oh yeah, yeah. Because we we went over sixty four thirty on the Bitcoin. Um, yeah. Wow. Well, look at Bitcoin. We went over. Uh, we went over. Oh yeah. Dude. Yeah. So I got. I got another one sitting at sixty four fifty, and uh, I mean. So now, like, 
we can look at the order book and see. Um, it's kind of tough to explain, but you know, like under the totals, you see like the red bars and the green bars, like when they thin out, mm -hmm. the price doesn't always go that way. Sometimes it goes like the opposite. You just, when you look at the order book and see if like the orders are eaten into it or if they're just manipulating the price, you know what I mean? And that's when you check the recent trades? Mm-hmm. Yep. It's moving so fast. It's hard to... <laughs> I wonder, it'd be nice, like, I don't know if you could, um, uh, I guess it's not going to let you do that. I was thinking it'd be nice to, like, set it up so that it's looking at some of the bigger transactions as opposed to some of these smaller ones. Huh. I don't think it'll do that, though. It's an interesting thing. You know what I also want to do is um, or, uh, maybe set this up on two screens. So, like, I'm, I'm currently on my laptop, but uh, spreading some of the stuff out, yeah, so I can get more data. Because right now, everything crammed into one screen is... Uh, Not enough data for Clover. Yeah, I like the analytics. I, I want to see what's going on. I want to see all the, the, uh, the data of kind of what we're dealing with. see here right so we pumped into the Bollinger Band we get two or three red candles probably three in this case you know we want to we want to maybe enter a short but even though you have like trades in you know I mean you don't have to but just like a possibility you miss this trade or something yeah let me uh let me look at this a little bit differently and that three-minute Bollinger Band, it, just, it, it was tightening up. Damn it, I wish I would have said something. I was going to say something. We were talking about something else. Well, you're talking about it was kind of poised for a breakout, either up or down. But you, it's kind of like your higher risk area once you... Uh, oh, yeah, yep. Um, There's a lot of selling going on, it looks like. So maybe this is uh, poised to go the other way. And the buy side is really thin, so it could really drop in price here fast. And it looks like that's what it's doing. Yeah, so, okay, so sometimes, man, when the buy side gets thin, that just means a big player... So it's retroactive. So you see that 1.8 million? That adds to like all the totals behind it. So if that one moves, sometimes they're taking it away to eat into the opposite book. So sometimes you can be fooled. You'd be like, mm -hmm. oh shit, the, the book is thin. <clears throat> but what they're doing is taking the money off and eating into the other side. So sometimes like it'll knife, but it's going the other way. And you'll be like, okay, so like I see they're, they're and then they're, they're pushing, you'll know that they're pushing up price or pushing it down whatever way it's going so it's pretty you know you'll you'll become one you're going to become one with the spoofy i think this could get pretty addicting <laughs> i can see uh um especially if you know know what you're doing and uh you can get on here and um yeah like this is this is uh an area that i've really been wanting to to get into so i think i'm going to be uh um trying to figure out the best way to set this up. So I think maybe when we get off our stream, like I'm, um, yeah, I think it was a long stream. What are we sitting at? How, how long have we been on here? It's been a while. Huh? Uh, let's see. It's had to be, I restarted my cold time probably like two hours. Probably yeah. Probably a two hours. Well, um, uh, until next time, did you get my Discord invite? Yeah, I'm in. I'm in. Word. Right on, dude. Well, shit, man. Good job on the first trade, dude. Good yeah. job. You nailed it. Well, uh, I have to figure out um, how to how to set this up so that we get the audio thing fixed. Um, I mean, they're they're saying they can hear you. It's or it's just really low, and I don't know if that has something to do with. Uh, uh, Discord, because it, it's got to be running through Discord, 
and oh but what if it's my system volume on my computer I never looked at that let me see if that um, I want I just want to troubleshoot a few things and see if All I can right. um, uh, for a yeah let me um, let me see if I can get my uh, volume what oh, fucks my volume well, you can filter out the big trades with the significant trades website what's that dude significant trade website oh I showed you coin farmed out online as well right no type in coin farm dot online for a second in a new tab coin farm dot what online and you'll see why I always see those uh, in the trading view indicators they have in there but the, it shows all the oh, yeah. all the longs so you can see what the like what everyone else is doing man yeah this is similar to trading view this is kind of like what I was uh, mentioning just just as some data you know maybe just to consider I, I know you said that maybe it's oh it's from trading views look what it looks like this is probably better than logging in the um, those little charts are if you scroll down you'll see what uh, what it's really for it's for the longs and shorts and like on the bottom right they have like 30 min one hour two hours pretty cool yeah Oh, this is great. I'll, I'll have to dive into this a little bit. <laughs> oh, this is great. Uh, <laughs> right up your alley, bro. You put it on the UFO monitors. Yeah. I'm uh I'm uh, I'm gonna work on my setup here. I'm gonna get this uh I'm gonna get this going. We'll be uh we'll be the people everybody be tuning into to uh to trade. Oh yeah, man. You wanna Crypto Clover Master Master Trader Master Bitmex. <laughs> Bro, we're working on telling you, man. A diplomat. I tell you what, I was like, I was even saying, like, I mean, potentially just building like another like BitConnect type platform. Like, if you can get something set up like this where you can make enough money to, uh, um, you know. And, and you have enough um, uh, scalability or something like that, and you can set this up. And that's kind of what I was doing in California until I kind of left and left that project. But you get you get something like this working where you can kind of do something of, you know, of that nature. You get some people, you know, coming in and helping you. I mean, uh, I've had a lot of people, uh, developer types, have reached out to me. They've been wanting to, to build, you know, a platform for me or to help me do some things. I just, you know, I'm just like, I, don't, I ain't got the time because I'm traveling and like I can't I can't do it right now. But I've been wanting to do something like that, and uh, you know it maybe maybe uh, it's kind of like a long term thing. But you know, first I guess is to figure it out, play with it, you know, learn it for a little while, and then you know maybe scale it to the point where you're bringing in other people. So I guess you got um, maybe a different way of doing that through your through your Discord or maybe some other avenues or some things you're doing, but. Uh, you know, I mean, yeah. I'm trying to get to a point where I can, um, you know, like I can, I can bring other people in and, uh, especially that, that don't have like this type of, uh, knowledge. Right. So, yeah, man, I've tried to trust me. I did and I, and you know, so it's just with training, it's tough cause you have losses, man. Like, you know, yeah. like, and everyone's, everything's great when you're winning. Sure. When shit goes backwards, you know, you see what fucking happens. You know what I mean? Yeah. You become famous. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm tired as hell, bro. Yeah, what, so, it's, it's late there. I know. I mean, yep. um, yeah, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll look into this, um, see if I can figure out. Well, I was like, maybe my system volume, maybe I adjust that up or something. That'll fix the volume issue, but... Uh, I want to throw some money into. I'm going to throw some money into this contract, the exit scam. Yeah, I think now's a good time. I don't know. If I, I, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go hard, but I I don't know about buying. P, I I don't think P3. Let me let me check P3D. Let me let me check. Uh, 
what's what's going on with the price because it was at like forty seven thousand last time I was checking. Um, I mean, my theory was this is going to trend towards uh, forty. It's still at forty seven thousand. So like when that, all of that positive uh, volume that was coming in uh, was because of FOMO. So it's not people buying into the P three D contract. And if you zoom out, I think like. I just got burned on this before because I, I bought in uh, like, you know, after the first P3 pump, uh, I think around like 9,000 or so. Like, no, I guess it was around like seven, between seven and, and 9,000. I bought a bunch at 6,000, but then like seven or 9,000. And then when it went to 4,000, you know, like basically like the ETH I had in there, the value went in half and there wasn't enough volume in the contract to uh, provide dividends to kind of make up make up the uh, difference. So, but I held through that whole downtrend. Uh, I'm thinking that it's, it's you know history is going to repeat itself. So it's pumped up a little bit, but I think it's just going to you know slowly kind of progressively go down, and the dividends are going to not be all that great. Like the contracts kind of bleeds a little bit in that way. So I think it's it's trending towards like forty thousand or so. I mean, you got to remember, like you know, not too long ago, this this contract was at four thousand. So I mean, it's it's more than ten x up. Um, it's very possible that it could it could really drop, and that's why, like, I I just cautious caution people um, about this until uh, uh, you know something happens. I think if a big piece of news comes out because they have this like uh, dyed project D I E three uh, D that's going to come out at some point. Um, you know, if that's going to be uh, a good project for them, you know, if it's innovative, if it's something similar to the FOMO long contract, uh, that could really cause uh, uh, P3D to pump. But I mean, this thing went to like between seventy and eighty thousand um, because of FOMO long, and that was really it. Uh, you're gonna if I turn off the screen share, I think uh, I'm gonna lose you. Yeah, I don't need to see your screen. But I think, uh, oh, if I just do. Ah, uh, yes, thank you. Okay. Oh, there, yeah, there, that's, that's what was bringing that up. The, I have the user volume all the way up. So they said that was better. So I think they're hearing you a little bit better, but I checked the system volume. The system volume is, is all the way up. So I don't know. It could be because we're doing a video, like since we're watching your monitor or some shit, that could have something to do with it. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think the FOMO, FOMO long one. Um, like I said, I, I wouldn't go in hard. I wouldn't put in more than like 10 ETH into it, you know. Um, but uh, I think that uh, right now, if you're if you're getting into it, you'll probably get uh, at least your your capital back. Um, but you probably have a good chance of making some money um, because it's it's been less than 24 hours, at least at this point. So you're still early. But if the if the contract gets hacked again, that's the whole thing. Like if they if they do the same hack and um, drain the contract by uh, you know doing that same like gas hack, like uh, that's a risk. That could um, that could be bad. So I got in I got in a decent position, and I'm just gonna hold at that, and then uh, uh, just roll with that. Oh, we're we're pumping now a little bit. We're getting closer to sixty four fifty, at least on Bitcoin. Let me check my sixty four twenty two. Let's check the E. Okay. Pump, baby, pump. I want Bitcoin to go down though. You got yeah, so okay, so since we broke right so since we broke over like that resistance now it's like support right so now you see breaks down below it you know more bearish isn't it cool how the lines work in the bone mm -hmm. bands yeah yeah and the hike in a she candles if it wasn't for those candles you wouldn't have made that long call the hike in a she like let you mentally see it you yeah know? Makes such a big difference. That's really all you need. You can trade just off, just off those. Yeah, I mentioned Tone Tone Vase. Like he, he has like a different style. That's kind of maybe you know 
opening up a can of worms, so maybe that's for the next stream, but uh, we could get into that a little bit. But he's got this whole numbering system that he goes by with the, uh, the candles and uh, has a lot of different indicators that he uses to, uh, uh, um, to base like his, his trades on, like he gives seminars, like he, you know, paid conferences, that, um, uh, things that like, like, um, not necessarily like a school, but like he does these, uh, like paid, uh, um, kind of walkthroughs on educating people on, on this type of stuff. So, uh, but he's been doing it a long time and he's, uh, so he's got a lot of experience. He's kind of the number one guy, like the TA guy right now in um, uh, on on Bitcoin. I mean, he's um, been growing a lot in popularity too. Like he uh, his his channel's been been really doing pretty well, and he's 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 done a lot of different collab sessions with some pretty big people in crypto. So I know you're still kind of new to kind of. Um, looking into some of his stuff and like I you know he does these really long streams too so like I don't watch a whole lot of his stuff and part of it was I was getting away from TA but I want to get more into it but, uh, Tone Vase yeah I think I mentioned it before but um, all right are you ready to call the stream then yeah man yep all righty Sweet. Well, let's uh, let's find a good time to do this again. Um, I'm gonna play around with this a little bit more. Work on my office setup. Smoke a few joints. Yeah, man. And uh, hopefully these uh, remaining positions close out, man. And that good shit, dude. Good fucking trade. You can do it. <laughs> All right, man. Have a good night. You too, brother. Peace. Later.